rise to Mr. Vice President. Um, we presented three uh, memoranda to council. One of them was an information memorandum, and it relates to the outcome of the National Council on Works that was hosted in uh, Gombe State this year in October. And the resolutions that council reached, uh, such as matters relating to a decision to use more innovative materials in road construction, like concrete, uh, information to the council about the decision of the federal government uh, about the national tolling policy, which was adopted by the federal government for the information of the states to adapt and those kind of things. That was the information memorandum. Then there were two uh, contract memoranda relating to roads. One was with regard to a section of the Calabar Ikom Ogoja Road, the section linking Akpet Central. There was uh, a problem with what we call uh, these steel reinforced uh, drains that we discovered there. So those drains were put there. I think about 42 years ago, and there are 86 of them that have failed. And we need to replace them now with concrete ring drains to allow water to flow. Uh, otherwise, the retention of water badly impacts the road. As a result of that, we had to revise the scope of works from rehabilitation to construction. Uh, in order to remove all the old uh, steel drains that had corroded and replace them with concrete drains uh, and over 75 kilometers of road network. And uh, that required an augmentation of the contract by an additional sum of 12 billion naira. So that memo was approved. The second memorandum relates to the road infrastructure tax credit scheme. Uh, you will recall that policy, Executive Order 7, signed by Mr. President, allowing private sector operators to identify infrastructure such as roads for which they will deploy their taxes in advance, the taxes that they should have paid. So you recall that I had briefed you here about the use of that pro policy by the Dangote group on Obajana to Kaba and Apapa to Urushoki. And later this year, earlier this year, there were five other roads, the Kaduna Western Bypass, uh, the uh, Lekki Port Road, uh, the road from Shag uh, Shagamu through Papalanto, and a couple of others like that. One road in uh, Maiduguri uh, that was approved about 320 something billion. So today we have another player. Uh, we have other interested players who are still showing interest. We haven't concluded, but we have another player who has shown interest and committed to deploy taxes 
and it's the government corporation known as NMPC. So NMPC has identified 21 roads that it wants to deploy some of its tax liabilities to. Now, the instructive thing about this is that the, this initiative helps government to achieve many things, including ministerial mandates three and four, which were discussed at the last retreat. Ministerial mandate three, if you recall, was energy sufficiency in electric power and petroleum energy distribution across the country. A petroleum energy distribution is being impacted positively and negatively, as the case may be, by the transport infrastructure, which is ministerial mandate four. So NMPC has sought and council has approved today that NMPC deploy tax resources to 21 routes um, covering a total distance of 1,804.6 kilometers across the six geopolitical zones. Out of those 21 routes, nine are in North Central, particularly Niger State. And the reason is that Niger State is a major storage center for NMPC. So the reason NMPC is doing this is to facilitate petroleum distribution across the country. And you've seen that we've had every year Niger State gridlock, the governor complaining that his roads are being damaged by trucks, trucks who overload their trucks after damaging the roads themselves now protest for the damage that they sometimes have induced. Anyway, this is the final solution to that problem. So there are nine like that in North Central. There are three in the Northeast. There are two in the Northwest, two in the Southeast, three roads, the entire Udupani Itu, Ikotekwene roads in lots one, two, and three, now fully covered. Um, then in the southwest, you have the Lagos Badagri Expressway, the Agbara Junction, uh, and you also have Ibadan to Iloring, the Oyo section. Um, so that's it. Uh, in the southeast, you have Aba Ikotekpene in Abia and Akwa Ibom State, so that's a major link. Then you have Umaya Ikwano to Ikotekpene Road uh, again, and, and so on and so forth. In the northwest, it is uh, Gada Zaima Zuru Gamji Road and also Zaria Funtua Guzo to Sokoto Road. Uh, in the northeast, it is Cham Numan, Bali Serti, and Gombe Biu Road. Uh, the roads impacted in the north central include the Lorinjeba Mokwa Bogani uh, sections one and two, Sule Jamina sections one and two, Bida Lambata, Agir Kacha Baro Road, and uh, Mokwa Makera Tegina Kaduna border in Niger State, Mina Zungiru Tegina Road, and Bida Mina Road all in Niger State, as I said, a total of 21 roads. What will happen as a result of this is that there will be no financing problems with regarding the execution of these roads anymore. So some of these roads I've mentioned, let me tell you what has changed. For example, Aba Ikotekwene Road has an estimate of about 30.33 399 billion to complete it. The provision in the budget this year is only 200 million. Um, if you look at uh, Suleja Mena Road, Section 2, it has 25.763 billion to complete it. The provision in the budget this year is just 100 million. So, with this intervention, all those roads now will be fully funded. They don't have budgetary challenges and financing challenges anymore. So um, council approved this uh, as a strategic funding for this road network.
from the Ministry of Power, uh, we presented uh, three memos. The first one was uh, approval for the award of contract for the design, manufacture, supply, construction of 55 kilometer Agu Aqua Umuchi 132 kV double cycle transmission line and a substation at having two transformers, two by 60 MBA at Ibuchu Umuchu with a two by 132 kV line bay extension at Agu for Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Uh, this is between uh, Anambra and uh, Inugu State. And uh, Council has approved the contract to Messrs. Mrs. Uh, Cadillac, Nigerian uh, uh, Limited, at this total sum of, uh, it has two components of uh, finance. Uh, one is the dollar component, 16,165,000 uh, and 19 uh, million dollars, point 0.97 cent. And the Naira component is 4 billion, uh, 44 million, 309,380 uh, Naira 69 cobble uh, with 7.5% VAT and 7.5% contingency uh, payable at the Central Bank of Nigeria prevailing exchange rate at the time of payment with a completion period of uh, 34 uh, months. <coughs> this is part of the expansion and modernization of the, uh, the grid, the TCN uh, transmission uh, grid. And council has approved that. Uh, the second one was the approval for award of contract for the procurement and supply of two fell safe 60 MVA 152, 132 stroke 32 kV transforms for the transmission company of Nigeria. The, uh, the, 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 the transformers are called, as the name implies, uh, safe. Fell safe uh, transformers, they, they are protecting themselves against fire outbreak. They are made in a way that uh, once there is fire or any uh, fire outbreak, it will not affect the, the transformers. So these are modern equipment that have been uh, procured to replace the old one. This is also part of the modernization of the equipment on the transmission uh, uh, lines. So the total uh, <clears throat> contract sum uh, is one billion eighteen million four hundred and thirty-two thousand nine hundred and uh, thirty nera sixty-eight kobo, made up of uh, one uh, million nine hundred and. Uh, 4,227.5 euro, the offshore component, plus 155 uh, 1,875,000, the onshore, inclusive of 7.5% uh, inclusive VAT, with a delivery period of, uh, of nine months. This was also approved by, by council. The, the third one is approval for variation of an ongoing uh, contract. The, the contract for the construction of two by 150 MBA 
330, 135, 132, 33 kV, uh, 2 by 60 MVA, 132 by 133 kV substations. These are all uh, transformers. And uh, 4 by 330 kV line bay extension at Akure, and 4 by 330 kV line bay extension each at Oshogo and Benin North was awarded by the Ministerial Tenders Board, MTB, to Messias, Metalac, SAL Engineering and Constructing uh, Limited on 27 September 2011 in the sum of uh, $19,025,535.45 plus $1,068,728,000 996 inclusive of 5% VAT as at that time. So uh, it became obvious and necessary to uh, seek for this variation. So the contractor requested and uh, uh, the necessary checks were done and the contract uh, is now being increased by this uh, memo to the council. This approval seek to increase the, the, the contract amount to, uh, from the amount stated uh, to now One, excuse me, I beg your pardon. Okay, the the on, the, the offshore component still remains. The 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 onshore is now increased to one billion four hundred and forty six uh, million three hundred and ninety eight thousand six hundred and sixty one uh, nera seventy five cobo. This is. Uh, with inclusive of 7.5% VAT. And the council uh, graciously approved this. So there is uh, an increase of the sum of 377,669,665 Naira 75 Kobo. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Gloria. Your question is very valid, increase of supply to, to manufacturers. Um, this is being considered under the eligible customer uh, policy, whereby uh, a customer is allowed to directly uh, get his uh, power from, from the source, from the, the generator. So a lot of conversation is going on. We have been meeting to untangle some uh, challenges that we're having with that policy. You know, uh, everything that we do in the sector is being regulated by NAC. So even uh, two, three days ago, we were together with Embed and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the NAC to look at the contracts between Embed and NAC uh, and, and the Genkos. You, you know, the, 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 the Embed is the bulk buyer. It buys electricity from the Genkos and take it to the, uh, to the uh, distribution. So there are contracts between Embed and the, and the, uh, the generators. So we are looking at how to to, to free that policy of eligible buyer, uh, eligible customer, and uh, uh, willing seller, willing buyer can, can, can thrive. So a lot is being done in that regard. And uh, as you are aware, our major problem in the sector is the uh, quality of the, the supply and the illiquidity in the sector. And this takes me to the the, the, the second question 
of uh, the gradual increase of, uh, of tariff. As it is, you know, the cost effective, that is the, 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 the cost to, to produce the energy and, 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 and the cost being generated by the customers does not match. So this is why some people are talking of, of increase. And the government is stepping in, in between, to fill in the gap. And this is what is going on. And regarding increase, I, 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 I know uh, the labor and, and the ministry is working together uh, to, 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 to look at these issues. And uh, as they are going on now, I don't think it is good to preempt the outcome, but the labor is in, engaging through the Ministry of Labor and, and, and the ministry, uh, and the, uh, they are coming out with uh, the outcome. So uh, until then, I would prefer to wait and uh, to hear from the outcome of that in engagement. Thank you very much. Yeah, you see, uh, we don't have time. That is the major thing. So we are working round the clock to ensure that we untangle and, and free the, 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 the sector to, to thrive in all that, not only the, the, the manufacturers, everywhere. I told you the major problem. This is why we are trying to upgrade the, the transmission and the distribution. Once you do that, you will be able to evacuate and uh, what is being produced from the, from the generators. So we are working around the clock. In fact, we meet every now and then to ensure that if I give you timeline, uh, you may come back to me and ask me again, which I, I, I may not have the answer if I'm not able to meet up the timeline. So I would rather say that we will soon start to see result, inshallah. Thank you. So let me start where the Honorable Minister stopped, uh, which is the question from the same uh, person about deficit. I, I see that uh, you are reluctant to quote the unreliable figure that has been in the public domain. And I think that we deserve some credit for the commendable and forceful advocacy about that fictional data. So if you are not giving us the credit for it, we will take it nonetheless. That data is unreliable, it's fictional, it has no basis. But that said, you will also realize that um, uh, our planning, national planning uh, data in terms of a census is uh, one and a half decades old and about five years or so out of, out of tune. So we're hopeful that in the uh, ensuing year when the census takes place, uh, it will produce not just a national uh, head count and demographics, it will answer some of these questions because we've, we've worked, done some work with uh, the National Population Commission in 2016-2017, developing um, guidelines of the kind of material and information and data we want them to gather for us. But we're not waiting for the authenticity of the data to respond. As you know, we're building in uh, 34 states. That's over 5,000 housing units by the federal government alone. And uh, we are also trying to complete an inherited pilot housing scheme that has 6,000 units. That's another uh, uh, undertaking that we are, we are, we are, we are making. Federal Mortgage Bank is also financing estate development as it is financing mortgage loans. Federal Housing Authority is also intervening in across the states. We also have site and service schemes. We have some partnerships with private sector across Nigeria. But all of these speak only to federal government action. And whether you you, you like this or not, the truth is that the housing problem is going to be an all of government action, not just federal government. And this is uh, for many reasons, not the least of which is the fact that 
It is the states, not the federal government, that controls land, which is the essential component for building houses. So again, we're looking at what the states are, 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 are doing. And there is some commendable response in some states. And these were some of the things we spoke about at our National Housing uh, Council on Housing and Lands in Lagos, that many more states need to uh, uh, invest more in building houses because it's a Nigerian project, not a federal government project. But beyond all of this, uh, we, are, we resolved at our last retreat that we need to look at our fiscal and monetary policy uh, uh, kit shop to see what we can do differently to see incentivize the housing sector, perhaps in the way that we've seen some interventions in certain sectors by government working with central banks. So all of that, you will begin to see action in a matter of weeks because we're talking to so many levels of people. We even discussed it uh, remotely in council today so that more capital is freed up. But beyond all of this, all of this speak only to housing, construction, and development. We recognize empty houses that people cannot afford to buy or to rent. We recognize that affordability is also an impact of how payment is made. When you ask people to come and pay three years rent in advance, because not everybody can buy. Some people need to rent, at least to get on the ladder. When you ask somebody to come and pay three years rent in advance and his salary is paid monthly in arrears, there's a mismatch there, and there's an affordability problem. And that is one of the reasons why some houses are empty across many of the urban centers in Nigeria. Again, we continue to uh, deploy advocacy, uh, moral persuasion to landlords who are private citizens, not government, to reduce these demands, maybe to six months, three months rent, and bring these houses into the market. And we are also appealing to state governments and state legislators because rent control is not a federal matter. So state governments, state legislators, this is something that affects your constituents. See their faces, see their emotion when rent is due and how fearful they are. If you can act by legislation in some places to make this possible. So as I said, it's going to be an all of government, all of government action. Um, the questions about Odupani, you said you had Odupani, Odupani. Odupani is one of the, um, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, gridlock points that has been in the news for a while. We've managed to progress on Cham Numan. We've managed to progress on some others. And so this is an opportunity to solve this. So Odupani is Odupani to Ikotekpene, uh, in Cross River, linking Akwai Bomb, is a total of 81.9 kilometers. It is broken into three sections. The total cost for that road to complete is 172 billion. So that's what is going to be coming in to solve that problem. Instead of just disaggregating uh, these resources, what NMPC wants to do is solve a problem so that it can do its fuel business. So, and there are other interventions uh, in the South South that we have done. We just finished a bridge there, the Econ Bridge. So nobody is left behind. So I, I think that's what we need to take away. And this is a strategic intervention. I can tell you, even in council today, there were many members who are saying, oh, my road is not there. You didn't put my... You see, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to solve a common objective that we agreed to as ministers and as a government. The president's mandate, I want energy sufficiency, energy security. Move petroleum products across the country. I want reliable transport infrastructure, road, rail, air, and sea. Those are mandates three and four. And this is a government intervention to ensure that we can co coalesce it and achieve that strategic objective. So not a few. There are roads even in my state too that I want to put. I can't put it. That's the truth because it's not about persons, it's about a common goal. 
um, what else do you ask me? How much it will cost? The whole package is six hundred and twenty-one billion, two hundred and thirty-seven million, one hundred and forty-three naira, eight hundred and ninety-seven point thirty-five kobo. So, but this is not a one-off payment. So let's be clear: it will be spread over periodic tax. This thing over about three years. The cost and time. The time frame for completion, these contracts already exist. They have scheduled completion times. What has hobbled them and hampered them is that the annual budgetary provisions have not been enough. So what this does now is that government can say, like the PIDF, Lagos, Ibado, Second Niger Bridge, and all of those type of roads that have dedicated intervention, we found a solution to 1,800 kilometers. That's huge. We solve the problem. Then we go and manage our resources. Yes, they, as you asked, were they in the budget? They were in the budget. So what you see here is that uh, I've mentioned some cases like, uh, what do you have? The Okuiboku power plant section. It has 79 billion to finish. There was no provision at all in the 2021 budget. In the places where there is provision, maybe 100 million, we are more than halfway into the budget we started implementing. So it's pro it probably has been paid. And where it has not been paid, the certificate is pending. We will pay it. And from then on, we will move to the new financing structure. Just as we transited the second Niger Bridge, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway from the old budgetary arrangement to the PIDF will transit these two. So those are administrative, uh, listen, there'll be meetings with all the contractors who we'll review all the agreements and all the performance levels, and then we we'll take it forward from there. So have no fear. <laughs> So to the best of my knowledge, every artifact that has been returned so far has been handed over to the National Commission for Museum and Monuments, and I've not heard that any has been returned. Well, my position has always been very simple. It is the issue of, you know, negotiating for return of artifacts is the responsibility of the federal government. It's between one sovereign nation to the other. That is what we are facing now. 